Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Game Theater Com video, we're going to be discussing further details of the RX 580, which primarily goes into the overclocking capabilities of the card, we'll get into that in a second, as well as more details about the Scorpio. Specifically, this pertains to the GPU and CPU side of things, which I figure you might find interesting. So it's a bit of a weird mixture, but I figure it works for this particular video. So first of all, we're going to discuss some details from Lau Kin Lam, who is an overclocker. Pretty infamous one. He was synonymous with some Ryzen 5 leaks and also the RX 480 stuff. And apparently he has managed a 10, sorry, a 3 hour, I was about to say a 10 hour, 3 hour long test of the RX 580. So the basic gist of this is he had a card, we're not sure of the exact model because he has said it's exclusive to China, but it is essentially a reference board. That's very important because there's only a single 8-pin power connector. Anyway, the too long didn't read as he put it under water cooling, it was a water cooling block, and we have a GPU-Z screenshot which shows overclocking of the GPU, and he has managed to squeeze two particular combinations of performance out the card. The first was 1480 megahertz on the core, but 850, uh, sorry, 8500 on the RAM, or 1500 on the core, but 8000 on the RAM. So in other words, one meant that uh, the GPU speed was slightly higher, but at the sacrifice of RAM speed. Now the purpose behind this supposedly is the voltage. In other words, with the 1500 MHz, it requires increased voltage, and it does seem to be affected by a power bug, which essentially means lower performance. So in his particular performance runs, it's better to have 1480 and 8500 MHz respectively on the GPU and the memory clock. But either way, that does mean that the 3D Mark Time Spy score hits around 4660, which is not too shabby at all when you factor in the price of the GPU. Similarly, you can have Superposition Benchmark with 1080p Extreme hitting just over 2700 points. What does all of this mean? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, obviously, these are very early uh, results, so don't take them as indicative of the, you know, what every GPU can perform at. Second thing, I would definitely wait until you see more results from the, you know, custom variants of the card, because as you probably are aware, the first generation, if you will, of Polaris graphics cards like the RX 480s, they were all following the custom call the variant, and obviously had only the 6-pin power connector, in other words, the reference design, and later versions that did allow much better overclocking. So in many cases, you would get at least 100 megahertz, for example, on the GPU core, which naturally increased performance quite a bit. So let's just see what happens. My personal uh, my personal opinions on this remain pretty much identical. The performance is almost what you would expect for the card. So it's a slight side grade, slightly moving up from the 480, but if you've already got a GT, um, an RX 480 card, you're certainly not going to be particularly feeling bad about this particular uh, release at all. So there are a couple of things I want to discuss regarding the Scorpio. You know, a lot of folks are messaging me, asking me regarding the, I guess, translation of a lot of the technical details regarding the Scorpio, which Eurogamer are putting out, including a very interesting article, which is the Scorpio engine in depth, where they go very exhaustively into the details they found out from Microsoft. It is quite a technical article, and a number of you have messaged me, asked me to kind of go through that. I, quite frankly, don't have the time right now. I'll go into why at the end of this video, but I do want to discuss a couple of very interesting things that we've learned. I will try to remember to link it in the video description. If not, you can simply Google it, Eurogamer, the Scorpio engine, and it will pop right up. Unsurprisingly, the article once again reiterated the fact that the system does not have any Ryzen technology in Project Scorpio, but Microsoft did, were very keen to point out that the CPU has drastically improved two major important um, areas, frequency and memory latency. In other words, if the CPU has data, it's able to faster process it. Whereas on the other hand, if it doesn't have the data, it sits idle. So in other words, the CPU could not just process data that it already has access to, for example, in cache, but it's also much better equipped to be able to pull data out of, you know, main system RAM and then pull it onto its own uh, core so it can process that data. So there was a couple of ways they did that. One was the queues coming from the memory interface, so they sped those up, specifically within the core. Now, if you're not too familiar with the Xbox, it basically runs 
with a host OS with a couple of um, virtual OSs running inside of those. Now, there are a couple of reasons Microsoft chose that uh, route, and it's actually one of the primary reasons that originally the system required 8 gigabytes of uh, DDR3 memory back in the day. In other words, it wasn't they weren't able to accomplish it with just 4 gigabytes, which is the reason they went the DDR3 route, because they were not confident they would be able to get an abundance of GDDR5 chips large enough to accommodate the 8 gigabytes goal. But what they essentially did is virtualize it so that um, if, for example, an app crashes, it doesn't crash the game. Or if a game crashes, it doesn't crash the system. In other words, it's kind of like a, I, I guess, a firewall. So in other words, you essentially make sure that uh, you have a redundancy there. So they did say, and I quote, um, We wanted to optimize how memory translation operations happen, so there are some key changes inside the core to speed those things up. The end result is not only does the CPU run faster, it also runs more efficiently. efficiently. They also confirmed that there are Polaris features inside the Scorpio. Some of the big ones are Delta Color Compression, which helps us save bandwidth both for 4K textures and rendering solutions. It's quite typic it's typically quite easy for the developers to integrate, and then also more transparently, we picked up some geometry and quad scheduling improvements AMD have done in the Polaris architecture. And they have also added in a few optimizations from AMD's Vega architecture. Now, one of those... Um, one of the more infamous uh, technologies inside the PlayStation 4 Pro was double rate FP16 processing. But according to um, Andrew Goosen from Microsoft, they have not added that into the Scorpio. But they did put a, a, a number of other extensions and customizations into the GPU. Despite that, we're actually faster on the GPU. You might think, oh, you're sending more commands to the GPU, so you're slowing the GPU down. Well, very rarely we're drawbound on the command processor, this is according to Goosen. A nice thing is that even if we were to draw bound on Direct 3D12, again, we have a more efficient, even from the GPU's perspective, because we're built in. We don't have a very big, noisy, and abstract interface to have to deal with. We've built the logic right into the command processor, and the command processor we can do more optimizations than we can in the driver. Now, this, of course, is in reference to the fact that they've basically built DirectX 12, at least quite a, quite a lot of the instructions, directly into the command process of the GPU. Now, if you're not too familiar with what that means technically, I'll give you the too long didn't read brief synopsis. Essentially, DirectX 12 is the communication language. It's the API, it's the abstraction layer that developers can use to basically tell the GPU what to do. So let's say you're running a game engine. Let's say you're running, I don't know, um, Quake, just for example. So Quake is basically communicating using DirectX to the GPU. And obviously the CPU is issuing commands as well. So the CPU and the game engine and all this other stuff works together. So generally the CPU will tell the GPU I need you to draw that. So it issues a command to the GPU. The CPU issues a command to the GPU. And the GPU will do whatever it needs to do. There are thousands, especially in the Scorpio, of different shaders, which essentially basically draw things. They will schedule workloads across those using the command processor. So what happens is the GPU um, is sent a command, and then the command processor the command processor then has to take that work and schedule it accordingly. So what has happened here is they've basically done away with the middleman, at least somewhat. They've taken away the software side of things, and now the CPU can directly communicate and basically take out some of the middle work from the developer. And according to Microsoft, and obviously, you know, I'll wait, I'll be somewhat sceptical until we actually get, well, not sceptical as in I don't believe them, but sceptical as in, you know, I want to see more evidence of it. Um, perhaps, you know, more games, see how they perform and all of that stuff. According to them, what could be thousands of draw calls, which draw calls are basically what they say on the tin, a CPU is told, telling the GPU to, you know, draw an object. Thousands of draw calls or four, thousands of instructions can now be simply relegated to just a few dozen. Sorry, I had to stop there because the neighbor's dog was barking, which was not ideal. 
And there is a lot more stuff as well that I can go through with the Scorpio analysis, but quite frankly, it's an extensive article. And that does bring me to a few issues that I'm having in my personal life. Now, quite frankly, I've not been discussing them because, well, they're kind of personal. But I, I did want to be honest with you guys because, well, I feel you deserve it. And a number of you have been messaging me asking where content's been. So, here it goes. Um, basically, um, um, it's kind of hard to discuss this, but uh, my mum has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. And she's kind of, well, it basically, the all I'll say is the disease is moving a lot faster now than what it was a couple of weeks ago. And so, obviously, I need to spend a lot more time with her. So, Amy will be taking on most of the responsibilities because we've got some hardware we need to finish reviewing. Fortunately, I've done most of the due diligence, so she only has to kind of finish off a bit of editing. Uh, just being completely honest with you, because I feel that's the best policy. Um... We have a Zotac GTX 1070 Amped. The review is all done. Uh, Amy just needs to finish the editing. We have a GTX 1050 Ti, which uh, the benchmarking needs to be done on that, but that's not going to be too bad. We have a 1060 as well, which needs to be finished, and a few other bits and bobs. So the content will be coming, and I will do my best to get the analysis stuff out. So Amy will probably have to do a lot of the GPU stuff so I can focus on the more technical analysis and other bits and pieces. But obviously, at the end of the day, I'm going to have to try and work around things. I will still be creating content because, quite frankly, um, it's quite good for me mentally to not have to think about stuff all the time. So I guess work is a bit of escapism for me. So yeah, anyway, I don't want to be overly negative in this video. Um, and I have already mentioned this on Facebook, on RGT Facebook, and a number of you have actually messaged me, um, you know, giving support, which is greatly appreciated. So, normal stuff, uh, yeah, just thanks for watching. It means an awful lot to me that you guys are watching our content, and uh, yeah, so I will be around. So if I don't message you, and it's one of the reasons I've been a bit slow messaging on Facebook, and uh, it's not because, you know, it's not because I don't want to, it's just because, quite frankly, sometimes I just don't have the mental energy. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, that's about it for this video. So, sorry for leaving kind of on a down note, but as I said, don't worry, I will be I will be okay. And, uh, just, yeah, thanks a lot for all the support. It means an awful lot. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.